Saturday morning. Workout's done. Do my usual uh, check-in with clients in the in the morning, and there's some great stuff. There's some challenges as well. And uh, the thing I notice repeatedly over the years, and uh, this is going to trigger you, as a smart person, smart people are really damn good at being too smart. So the thing that I get people to do, the thing that I teach people to do is make an offer with a defined promise, solve a specific problem, put that offer in a Google Doc and send it to people um, who you qualify and ultimately sell them that offer and get them the result. Right, you know, there's some there's some steps in between, but it's it's simple. But it's not easy, right? There's a difference between simple and easy. And the the thing I've realized over the years is that I got rich being dumb, <laughs> right? Um, the more I thought about all the potential outcomes of what could happen, oh, they might not buy the offer, I might get rejected, or I might get ghosted, um, people might not like it, or I might be too salesy, the less I did. The less offers I sent, the less offers I made, the less content I published to make offers to qualify people to start conversations to you know, send them the doc. And I've seen this pattern over and over again with smart people because what smart people can do is imagine the future. They can imagine the future because they can think about all these potential outcomes, right? And it's just a fantasy. Oh, I'm going to put this offer in this document and I'm going to send it and I'm going to send it to 10 people and they, I might get ghosted. I'm going to get ghosted. Okay, then I'll feel bad about myself um, because I won't know what to do next and it will confirm some little demons in my head that I'm not good enough to help people and, and, the, and the stuff chatters up. Or what if they say no? Or what if they, what if they think I'm too pushy? And smart people can imagine these fantasy outcomes because smart people can... Um, imagine second and third order consequences of things. The problem is that none of those things have happened yet, but the subconscious doesn't know that. The brain goes, well, yeah, this is scary. Rejection is not nice. You know, being judged socially is not nice. So I'm going to avoid the actions that I need to take, and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to procrastinate on creating the offer and sending it to people and publishing the content that I need, that I need to publish and I'm just going to go back to redesigning my logo or refilming my training material or um, you know, researching what software to use or some other insignificant task that gets you away from the real stuff. And I have made millions being dumb by just doing the actions. And I got stuck in these places just like I see other people do every day and I see other people get in their own way because I could imagine all the social and the social risks and the downsides of just publishing content and making offers. And every time a hater came up or every time I was criticized in a comment or criticized in an ad or something like, you know, that little kid in me reared up um, just like it does with everybody. And smart people <laughs> particularly suffer from this because they can think about all the things that haven't happened yet. They can think about all the consequences because they can map them out. And that's a really big advantage to being able to understand, you know, the if I do this, then this happens and this happens and this happens. You know, being smart is a big advantage in a world that's getting more complex. But it's also a disadvantage when it gets in the way. And the, um, you know, I'm using smart and dumb in these really overly simplistic ways and they're kind of perturbative ways, but I have coached and I worked with a lot of people who didn't have the highest levels of intelligence and brain power and weren't meant to members. And they just did it. They, they didn't need to know all the things that were going to happen next and they just did it. And guess what? They did it. They learned something. They refined it. They did it again. They learned something. They refined it. And they got results much, much quicker than anybody else because they just took the actions. And no matter what you do with and for clients no matter what it is you 
you need people to follow some kind of process. You know, even if you'd offer done for you services, you need people to give you the logos, to give you the material, to approve stuff, etc. And anybody who overthinks things, and you know, people will say, I'm an overthinker, which is a catastrophic label. Anybody who overthinks things will always get stuck because he'll get stuck on the fantasy things that haven't happened yet. And in an increasingly complex world, there are more and more potential outcomes of every action <laughs> because of leverage. There are so many avenues to leverage. There are so many ways that we can have leverage from, you know, I'm making a video right now. This is leverage because I'm making this once and then dozens and then hundreds and maybe one day thousands of people will watch it. It's leverage, right? Uh, I can have one offer that serves hundreds and then thousands of people because I give them the material, the tools and the process to do it. So I've got lots of leverage and we all have lots and lots of leverage. So the more leverage there is in the world, the more potential outcomes there are. And the more potential outcomes there are, the more that you can get stuck in that catastrophic thinking of thinking that you know all the things that are going to happen, yet none of them have happened yet. So if you consider yourself smart, <laughs> if you consider yourself you know, someone with some brain power and you can start to see those consequences, you have to tell yourself the truth and the reality is that you do, know not, not what's you do not know what's going to happen. And all potential outcomes are useful. When, you know, I'll, I'll bring back to what I do. When we create an offer in a Google Doc and we send it out and 10 people see it and five people say no, then we, we count it as a win because when people say no, they understand what they're saying no to and it's feedback. When we send it out to 10 people and we all get, we get ghosted, we, we can deduce from that that people just didn't understand what the offer said, so we make it more specific. If you can detach yourself from the actions and see everything as feedback and everything from, as learning, then there will be much less intensity of emotion in the things that you know you need to do. And again, as a coach and mentor for many years, Everybody knows in that internal sense of knowing what they should be doing to get the things they say they want. Yet there's something in the way that's usually a mental or emotional block where you can justify not doing it, that you can do the busy work, the procrastination, the perfectionism, because you go back to that. And uh, smart people suffer from it a lot more than... Uh, I'll, I'll drop the word dumb, a lot more than less smart people because um, they can think or imagine they can think of all the cons consequences of doing it. So a useful reframe. It hasn't happened yet. You don't know what's going to happen. Every potential outcome from the action that you need to take is learning. Every potential path is can happen. You can get ghosted, you can get rejected, um, people aren't going to like the offer. You can get criticized, but it's all feedback. It's not on you. It's all learning. And learning enables us to go again. Learning enables us to, to improve. Every time I've done something dumb, I've learned something. <laughs> Every time I've done something that I thought was smart, I needed to go back to doing what was dumb, which was just doing the thing, taking the action and moving this step forward. And we all know. So... Uh, if you know what you need to do, then uh, maybe you should do it.